I was diagnosed in late March, early April, when the results came back and said, you do have cancer. Family is very important to me. I have uh, two children. I have a granddaughter, Adeline, and uh, I have a grandson, Jude. And all my thought process was, is can you keep me alive long enough to see my granddaughter be born in July? Translational research is really where all cancer research is pointing, right? We need to understand the biology, we need to understand the cancer, we need to understand the patient with cancer in order to treat it better and cure more people. In this video, you're gonna meet with some of the basic scientists who have developed the tests and the therapies, the clinicians who are taking them into clinical trials, and even more important, you're gonna see some of the patients who went on these early phase trials and got clinical benefit. We're like an incubator for good ideas, new ideas, and we have tremendous amount of energy to push that forward and improve patient care, and that's what patients look for us to do. And when we think that we have something that's new or novel, we can then apply it to patients. And the way that we really learn that is by having a foot in the clinic and having a foot in the research bench. I had noticed I was passing blood. Went to the urologist. I uh, had a cystoscopy, and while I was looking at the screen, I could see it. I, I looked like a baseball. Bladder cancer is an aggressive disease, but not all cancers require that aggressive treatment. One of my mentors, uh, Betsy Plimack, has developed some biomarkers that uh, seem to show which patients really benefit from chemotherapy and which don't. Patients donated tissue samples for us to study in the lab we learned that there is a molecular signature in the tumor tissue of our patients with bladder cancer that can help us determine who is going to be sensitive to the chemotherapy. We leveraged the discovery of this biomarker into a new question. Can we know who can keep their bladder versus who needs still more treatment such as surgery? And from that, the RETAIN trial was born. The question that my lab answers is, who actually responded to therapy. Uh, we study those biospecimens in the lab to better define a patient's cancer and understand why their disease either responds or does not respond to chemotherapy. I did ask the urologist where he would go if it was him, and he recommended Fox Chase and Dr. Kudikoff. What the RETAIN trial really offers a patient is a different option. At Fox Chase, we have a lot of expertise where we can create new bladders for patients, but there's nothing better than having your own bladder. This really was a unique opportunity for Tom specifically because of the possibility that, that we wouldn't have to remove his bladder and he could continue that really important part of his life. Joined the Garden State Underwater Recovery Unit with my son a number of years ago. Uh, what they do is find things that are lost underwater, primarily drowning victims. Keeping my bladder allowed me to continue the lifestyle that I already had. There's a good possibility I would not have been able to keep on diving. And in this case, I can now. I had a, an interesting lump on the bottom of my spine. I had lost about 20 pounds, and a friend of mine who's a masseuse, he said, I've seen a lot of backs and, you know, something's wrong. In 2013, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And the doctors looking at me, I could tell that there was not much hope. Mr. Daly's a remarkable person. I got to meet him after his oncologist had really run out of a lot of treatment options for him. Joe was a great candidate for some of this new injectable therapy. As a part of the phase one clinical trial team, we are working with first in human drugs. Some of them provide really good benefit. It's really rewarding and really satisfying. The therapy is a mixture of chemotherapeutics, which has a new proprietary agent mixed in it, which allows this chemotherapy to deliver itself or diffuse throughout the tumor. Ultrasound provides us with direct visualization so that we can inject this medication into the tumor. And I can remember 
The first time I learned that Joe was having a response was the oncologist called me up and said, have you seen these CAT scans yet? We're having some real effect here. We're noticing that some of the tumors look like they're effectively dying, and some of the tumors that we didn't even inject appear to be smaller. It gave me hope for the future. That's a win for me. This is the greatest time in the history of the world for progress and development in the treatment of cancer. Unfortunately, the funding environment in the United States has not kept pace with the development of the science. So you can make a real difference here by providing resources that we can use to achieve the ultimate goal. Well, I've met Dr. Uzo after I was diagnosed with a kidney tumor. After my treatment, I had decided what I wanted to support his research. Uh, Dr. Uzo wanted me to support one of his researchers, Philip Bosch. Those donations have been really instrumental in helping our lab make the advances that we've been fortunate to make so far. I pride myself on taking good care of the gifts that we've been given and being a good steward of those gifts. Philanthropic dollars allow people to have the nimbleness to do what they need to do to make the discovery. With people showing that commitment, you actually can go outside the boundary lines and make discoveries that can change tomorrow. More research means that someday, if you or one of your loved ones are diagnosed with cancer, these trials could turn into a cure for whatever they have. You could be impacting your children's or your grandchildren's lives in a positive manner. I think it's important that everyone here understands that they can make a difference. I was rolling around on the floor with my granddaughter, having her bounce around on my stomach. Without this research, I don't think I could have a full life with my grandchildren. What is someone's life worth? I'm very grateful for people that can actually extend your life and give you life. Here I am today, five and a half years later, because of Fox Chase Cancer Research. This is all a second shot at life, and Fox Chase gave it to me.